Okay, so let's get started uh, again. Hello, everyone. Um, good day to all of you. Hope everybody's keeping well, safe. Very happy to be talking to you again. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Bruno. I'm Key Account Executive for Novos. I look after um, Asia, uh, Africa, and Oceania. Um, have been working for Novos for about 10 years, a couple of, of years in R&D, then sales. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to share some experience with you today. Uh, my colleagues, Marco, um, Epifanio, uh, that work with, uh, with us in the international market uh, department are in the background. Um, they're taking care of your questions. So. Um, I believe most of you are familiar with Zoom. So it allows you chat that most of you are using now to let me know that uh, audio is okay. So thanks very much. And there's a Q&A box where you can send your questions throughout the presentation. So this is important. Questions are very important for us. So uh, my colleagues, uh, mostly Epifanio, will be answering uh, the questions throughout uh, the webinar on that too. And I have prepared a moment after the presentation so we can go through all your questions. So please keep sending your questions. This is what makes us uh, understand deeply the product, okay? Use the chat exclusively to make comments, suggestions, or report any technical issues with the presentation. Also, uh, during this webinar, I'll ask you uh, some questions, a couple of questions that are important to us as well. So I think I just have a few questions. These helps us defining the audience knowledge level. Uh, also understand what are the most relevant features for you. So please help us on that one um, if you can. So let's get started then. This should take us about one hour, uh, one hour and a half with all the questions. So I promise we'll make every minute worth your time. Okay, promise that. Before that, um, let's just have a quick look um, to Novos here. Novos is a Brazilian company. We have um, our office, which you, uh, um, you probably most of you deal with, in Miami. Um, our headquarters are in South Brazil uh, in a city called Canoas. Have just moved to this new beautiful building. Uh, we also have commercial offices in Argentina and in France. Our products uh, are divided in different business units. Today we're going to talk about more specifically the field logger which is within the data acquisition and communication business unit. Okay. We also have quite a lot of products in process control and indication, sensing conditioning and transmitters, and uh, software interfaces, okay? Um, let's just have a quick look through the agenda today. Uh, we will go through very quickly on, uh, uh, have a look at data flow within organizations, okay? Um, and then, I, I want to show you the field logger as a system, okay, in your company. Uh, then we'll go deeply on the analog and digital I.O. configuration. Um, alarms, so translate business rules into alarms. Integrate the data logger to other devices. Calculate other parameters from the, from the inputs that the field logger can have. And we'll see lots of applications and topologies. So that is to open your mind on other possibilities with the field logger. Also would like to mention that we are live on YouTube. You can uh, get the, the link and share with uh, whoever you think would be interested on that. Um, this video will be on YouTube later on so you can uh, access it. Okay. so. Let's have a look at data flow in the organization, okay? This is an introductory part, but it's also important. So data quality is the first, and first step and first concern. And what does that mean? Uh, that means data quality is the first basic step. Also the most important one, because it means to have a good uh, 
data flow in the organization, we have to start by having good sensors, calibrated sensors, enough accuracy to comply with whatever we want to achieve. So data quality is the first and most important step in order to have proper data in your organization. And then we need to ensure that data will be measured and transmitted to anyone who is responsible for that process or a stakeholder or interested in that particular data. Uh, these, uh, the data has to be transmitted in a fast manner while it is still valid, okay? And what is valid? Well, data validation means, well, is that data useful for uh, my process? Well, data has quality, has been transmitted in, in, in enough speed. Is it useful? Am I measuring useful data? Am I measuring something that really can impact in my process? Um, and then we come to data logging. Well. If this data is useful, is of quality and fast, why not log data? So when we see data in a specific moment now, we're just seeing it now, we're just seeing the present. Well, we must register that data so we can generate knowledge, we can generate history. So uh, data only becomes knowledge when it is process, uh, it's processed in, in a way that it becomes useful, okay? And how can you improve processes? You can only improve processes with registered data. If you're only seeing it in the present, you don't, uh, there's not a way to improve your process uh, if you cannot analyze data over time, okay? So that is important for us. It's, it's just an introductory part. And then, uh, it comes to notification. So now that I have useful data, I have logged data, I know what are my boundaries. I know what limits we're talking about here. Now I can alarm. Now I can advise someone that something is not right based on knowledge, based in what happened before. Okay. So one example here would be measuring temperature uh, in vaccines. Okay, so what is a notification is if, if temperature is rising above a limit that has been defined by a, by a regulatory body or something, um, we want to be notified. We want a heater to uh, go uh, to, to turn off or we want a cooler to turn on. We want to receive an SMS, an email. Uh, we want to sound an alarm. So something like this must happen. Um, and what we still see in the field, we still see after all those steps, there is also the point where, well, I'm taking notes in paper, I'm registering it on Excel spreadsheet later on. So when will you be able to analyze that data and take action? In a month's time, in a week's time, so delay in action. So that is what causes most problems. And well, if we fail, what would be the consequences? What are the consequences? Um, as, as, as a professional, um, if, if you have responsibility for that process and you're not allowing it to be properly measured, accurate, uh, recorded, it is your problem as a professional, but also for the business, you will not ensure the best possible quality for your end product and that will impact in revenue, if not uh, in fines by regulatory bodies um, or other examples, okay? So we have to look at something um, that will allow us to monitor, register and notificate and let people know that something is going wrong. So data acquisition systems, they allow you to do electronic records. They ensure you data integrity because nobody can go in a data logger and change data. Um, there is measurement reliability, and then we'll talk about the quality of the analog inputs and things like that, how you connect the sensors and so on. 
it must be of easy setup and usability, uh, usability. And by that, I mean, you know, that pharmaceutical companies or other companies, there are not uh, lots of automation specialists. And they want something that will be easy for them to use, that will be easy to set up. And also you as a solution provider don't want anything too complicated, okay? And it must be compatible with legacy systems or it must allow you to, to, to go for connectivity and so on. So before we get into the, um, into the technical stuff here and start talking about the, the, the features of the product and how to use it, I want to know from you, what is your experience level with data acquisition systems? You, might, you must see now a, um, a polling coming on your screen. Uh, if not, please let me know. Um, and I wanted to inquire about what is your experience level with data logging? Uh, are you a master on that? Do you know a lot? You have never seen it. Um, you have sold, but you don't know. So I just want to know what level we are at. Thanks for your answers. It's coming true. Give you 30 more seconds to answer for those who hasn't yet haven't yet okay nice thank you very much i'll share the results with you you can see a percentage here um, there's a percentage of guys that really know a lot of data acquisition. So that's very good because we'll learn together. Um, most of you, 53% have experience, but lack knowledge of the advanced stuff and other don't know much how they work. So that is good. And that's why we are here because we're here today to learn more about the, from the basics to the advanced stuff and how to make the best use of the field logger and how to enable your customers to use the most advanced features. So thanks for your answers. Let's get to it now. So for those who know the field logger, you might be familiar with those features. Um, so we're starting from the basics, from uh, letting you know everything that the field logger has. Well, it does have universal inputs. What does universal input mean? Well, it accepts all temperature sensors or most temperature sensors, PT100, thermocouples of several different types. Then we have the milliamps input for linear uh, inputs. So pressure transmitters, differential pressure transmitters, level transmitters. These are the ones you get most on milliamps. Uh, flow uh, transmitters as well, millivolts, volts, uh, and, and, and that in different and lots of different ranges. This is a very important point on the field logger, okay? Uh, it has eight of those analog universal inputs and plus eight digital IOs and two relay outputs, okay? So 512,000 records, and that's internal, internal memory. But if you want more, there is an expansion for up to 16 gigabyte uh, memory card. Um, it allows you, it's a unit that will allow you to do online monitoring as well as uh, recording. So that is very important because sometimes um, our customers think of the field logger just as a, as, a, as a recorder, but it will also make your life easier if you use it as an online monitoring system, okay? Uh, it does have a report editor, so it, you can generate reports, um, easy, very easy configuration, and that's going to be proved today. I'll show you uh, how, how the configurations are done. Um, we have on the input a 24-bit AD converter. We reach up to 1,000 samples per second, so for very fast systems where you need a very quick sampling rate, um, the field logger is ideal. We have uh, virtual channels, which means we can take all these inputs and uh, um, that come from different sources 
and calculate and make different things. And we'll see it in detail as well. Up to 32 configurable alarms and a detachable HMI that is an optional and can also be replaced by any other HMI in the market as long as it talks Modbus, okay? We'll also talk quickly, just briefly, briefing you on the interfaces that we'll see later on. Uh, the Field Logger has all these interfaces here, which makes it very easy to uh, integrate the Field Logger with other solutions that you might have or your customer might have already in their uh, company. So starting from the Ethernet interface, which is the higher level one, um, what does the Field Logger do with the uh, Ethernet? Well, it can serve a HTTP web page. It can send email alarms, okay? It can uh, be a Modbus TCP IP server, which means if you have a SCADA system that would like to inquire from the field logger, it is possible, okay? It is a server on Modbus TCP. It will also operate as a Modbus TCP to Modbus RTU gateway, okay? We'll see that later too. Um, and also it allows you cloud connectivity. On RS-485, very important, Field Logger doesn't have one RS-485. It does have two RS-485 interfaces. And when I say RS-485 interface, it's Modbus RTU protocol. On the primary interface, it's Modbus RTU, either master or slave configurable. And Beyond these HMI here, uh, on the back of this HMI here, there's a DB9 connector. This HMI connects and talks to the field logger via this DB9 connector, and it is a Modbus protocol. So if you have a need for two RS-485 interfaces, so for example, your field logger wants to be master of several devices here, but it's at, at the same time, it is a, a Modbus slave of a PLC. Well, you can detach this HMI and use the, um, the DB9 connector on the secondary interface, which is a Modbus slave only, okay? So here, Modbus master and slave, and here, Modbus slave only. USB interface, two, one for PC configuration. So, uh, Bruno, I want to configure my field logger. What do I need? You only need a USB type B cable. That's it. Oh, but uh, should I buy a special, a special cable from you? No, it's a USB type B cable, simple one. Okay, very simple one. Um, and here the host, which is um, useful if you want to collect data using a USB sticker. So you just plug the USB sticker in and your data automatically backs up on the USB sticker, okay? On the back of this HMI as well, there is a SD card interface where you can plug your uh, external, uh, external memory expansion. And you have those relay outputs that I mentioned before. Uh, just reminding you, if uh, you have any questions throughout the webinar, please send them now. We'll go through all of them in the end and my colleagues will also um, answer them to you uh, while I'm talking here, okay? If I do see anything that can be answered now, I'll do it live, all right? So let's look at the analog channels, okay? This is what looks like the configuration software. If you haven't seen it yet, you can go to our website and download our, our uh, field logger configuration software. And you can see it by yourself and you don't even need a field logger to test. You can create your own configuration offline, okay? So basically, we have those parameters here. We have the channels, so eight channels that can be enabled or not. We have a scan interval that is configurable, and it is shared between all those channels, okay? So you can every second read or every millisecond, it's up to you. Um, and then the parameters. So here you select a tag, an error value, input type, I'll go through all of them, right? Input type, unit, digital filter, decimal places, and custom calibration. So 
what all those parameters mean. Tag is the name of the, the is the name of the channel. This is what is going to be displayed when you download data from the field logger. Error value is basically what will show up both in the screen and also on the reports in case your sensor fails. So if I have a thermocouple connected directly to the field logger and by any chance um, one wire escapes or my thermocouple is blown away, well, what happens is error value is going to be displayed on the screen and also recorded in the memory. Um, one, one thing that is important here is also you can create an alarm for uh, when error value happens, so you will be notified if any sensor goes to error value. So that is a possibility, okay? Um, input type is a drop-down list. So you click here, you see all the possible parameters, okay? PT100, thermocouple type K, J, T, R, S, whatever. Um, 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 5 volts. Um, here, um, I'll go to the limits on the next example, all right? So unit in both degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, in your case here uh, in the United States. Digital filter, what is digital filter? Well, digital filter is, um, is, is a sort of uh, filter that will slow down the answer. Um, it, it will slow down the answer of the input. So one example that I'll give you is a measuring temperature, all right, with a thermocouple, type K thermocouple. And this, this thermocouple is, has a very fast answer, okay? So uh, very quickly it will respond to any um, temperature changes. Well, do you want to see temperature fluctuating every millisecond on one decimal place? I would guess you don't want to see that in most cases. In some cases, you might want to see that. So in that case, what you do is you apply a digital filter that by default is three, but it's configurable from one to five. By default, you, you, you put a, a filter so you don't see that temperature fluctuating that much. Well, there are some cases where you really want fast uh, action and fast response time. For example, if you're measuring pressure, pressure is something that can change very quickly and you want to act on that. So, and you want to see any, any, any small changes. So you might not want a big digital filter on, on when you're measuring pressure, for example, and mainly depending on what type of sensor you're using, okay? So digital filter is that filter which is applied by the field logger, okay? Um, decimal places is the quantity of decimal places you want to be stored and displayed, okay? And displayed. Uh, let's go to the next example here. Um, you will see a linear 4 to 20 milliamps uh, pressure transmitter connected here. So on that case, you can select your error value and you also have to select the limits. So what does that mean? Well, that means um, I want to go from zero to 10 when four milliamps is input is zero. When 20 milliamps is input is 10. Um, you choose the number of decimal places and you can also write down here your unit. So I could type down here bar or millimeters of mercury, millimeters of water or, or inches of water, whatever uh, you want to use here, okay? And there is another very nice feature on uh, the field logger, which is this, custom calibration. What is custom calibration for? So imagine any process or measurement that is not uh, linear, okay? I brought this example here because it's the simple one. Um, this example is measurement of level in a tank that is not, that is a, has, a, has a conical bottom, for example. So uh, a conic bottom. So here is a conic tank um, and you see level is not linear 
or, or, or volume is not linear throughout the tank. It's different depending on the, on the height. So in that case, you want to input your own curve, your own numbers. So what the field logger does is basically you write down what it's reading and what it should be reading and add. You're allowed to add up to 10 points here, okay? In most cases, you don't need those 10 points. Um, you need just a couple, but in other cases, you can also, um, you can also, you will add as many points as you can on the, on the most non-linear part of your curve, okay? So this is one example. The other example would be, oh, I'm measuring a sensor and I would like to have a calibration point. I would like to have an adjustment point um, at 200 degrees. My sensor is reading 200 degrees, but it's actually 203 degrees. I want to add that calibration point. You can do that, okay? So all of them, you can use that configuration and these will really allow you to do uh, several things, several different things. Let me release another question for you here uh, about the analog input. So I want to know what are the most important features you find on our analog inputs. It's multiple choice. You can choose as many as you want. Uh, just let me know what you think is the uh, what what you think are the most relevant uh, features on our analog input. I have a question here um, asking about the 24 bits AD converter. Uh, it asks if each channel has its own 24 bit AD converter or are the channels multiplexed? Uh, now it's, uh, it's multiplexed, okay? Um, so we're multiplexing all those uh, channels into a single 24, uh, 24 bit AD converter. Thanks for your answers, they came through. Uh, I'll share with you the results here. So uh, most of you, so I have, we have two winners here, I would say. So customized calibration and universal input are the ones you find most, more interesting, okay? Also uh, reading frequency in the, independent from logging frequency. I don't think I mentioned that properly. Uh, this is important. Um, you can select the inputs to be read at a frequency that is much higher than the frequency that you actually record data inside of the memory. What, what is the advantage? Well, the main advantage is you save some storage. Um, I'll give you an example. Remember I mentioned more than once that field logger is a nice option for monitoring system. You might want to be monitoring something very quickly, but you might not want to record that quickly. You want to take action fast, but for example, temperature, humidity, these parameters in, in when, when you, we're talking about room conditions, we don't want to be recording data every 30 seconds, for example, because it's not useful. Remember what I said about data validation, data must be useful. And if I'm, uh, if I'm recording every second a room temperature, why is that useful? I mean, what's the possibility of uh, room temperature changing every second? It, it has dynamic. It will, uh, it will change every minute, every 10 minutes or something like that. But you do want to be monitoring your SCADA system, for example, every second. That's not a problem, but you only record every, I don't know, 15 minutes, for example. So this is the main advantage that having those two independent uh, frequencies uh, gives you, okay? So, all right. Thanks again for your answers. Um, let's continue here. Um, well, we have um, spoken about the analog inputs. Now let's go into the 
digital channels. First uh, concept here that is important is our digital channels are IOs, meaning they work either as an input or as an output. As an output, I don't, sorry, I don't have a slide for output here, but I'll talk about output first. As an output, what can they do? They can do two things. First, they can act as uh, an alarm output. So if I have a logic, an alarm logic there, okay? And my logic says, if temperature is above 300 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, I want uh, an output to come on. That is a possibility. The field logger has all those eight analog, uh, uh, sorry, digital IOs plus two relays that can act as outputs for alarm. But I can also uh, enable them to operate as Modbus channels. Why is that useful? Well, imagine you have the field logger connected to a SCADA system, okay? And the field logger is actually not, um, not generating alarms. The SCADA system is the one that is dealing with the alarms, for example. And you wanted to have an output. Well, my SCADA system will write on the field logger's register and tell it to turn on and off its output. So the field logger in that case can operate as an alarming unit or a SCADA system could send a command to it and it will uh, comment its output. Okay, so those are the two possibilities as outputs. This works for the eight digital channels or for the two relays. But as inputs, they have also very powerful uh, functions, okay? First would be reading digital sensors. That's more obvious. Uh, what would that be? Well, a door switch, a uh, presence sensor, magnetic sensor, whatever, okay? Uh, a button, a push button or something like that to act at something. So alarms can be triggered by those outputs. So, for example, I could reset something, some counting to a button that is linked to a digital input. But also, and that's very, very powerful about the field logger, is that you can, uh, or digital inputs read pulses. And by reading pulses, it allows you to connect it to flow transmitters that generate pulse, pulse output. So voltage pulses. And the field logger will count those pulses and totalize volume or find out the, the, the flow rate. So that is a very important function that will allow you to do several other applications, okay? And the, the, the relays as outputs there, okay? Just moving on, we'll go in, in, into the into the more detailed explanation on the, on the flow stuff, because I think it's very important. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the, the remote channels, okay? Remote channels is what allows us to um, integrate the field logger with other devices through its, um, through its RS-45 interface. So, on the primary RS-485 interface, you have three options, disabled, master, and slave, okay? As a master, the field logger will be able to read up to 64 registers from several devices, okay? How does that work? Well, I, I lost count now of how many customers call us or send us an email saying, look, Bruno, field logger is nice, but it only has eight analog inputs. And my customer in this case wants 14. So it, and it's too expensive to buy two, for example, um, for their application. Well, I'll tell you, you don't need to have two. You can have one field logger and you will expand its channels. Okay, but how do I do that? Well, connecting IO modules to its RS-485. 
So that means you can expand its channels to more 64 channels. Okay, so if I wanted to have uh, 64 analog inputs, I would be able to use the eight that are native on the field logger. Okay, and I will use 56, 56 remote channels. And that will allow me to have 64 um, analog inputs. This will work for digital inputs. This will work for uh, proper transmitters. So in that, in this example here, I have an RETA. This is a temperature and humidity uh, transmitter that we have. It's a wireless temperature and humidity transmitter. And it is natively Modbus, uh, a Modbus slave, okay? So if I want to connect a Modbus slave directly to the field logger, I don't need to use its analog channels, its digital channels. I will connect it directly to the RS-45. What are the configurations I need to do, Bruno? Well, this is simple here. First of all is a tag. So I give a name to that channel. Then I will let the field logger know what is the Modbus address. For those who are familiar with Modbus, you know that every device on a Modbus network has a unique ID, a unique address, okay? So that unique address is that one, Modbus slave address. So it, it is the slave address, okay? Um, then you select the Modbus command. By default is 03, reading holding registers, but on the manufacturer's um, manual generally is where you will find what is the Modbus command it answers to. Initial register, what is the register the field logger will read? That again is inside of the uh, manufacturer's manual. So if you go to our RATA manual, you will see that 39 is the register for temperature, 40 is the register for relative humidity, and 41 is the register for dew point. Okay, uh, you can you can choose that. You can you can uh, you can look at the manual, and on the Modbus slave address, this is configurable. Generally, this is configurable. Okay. Unit is selectable. You write down the unit you want to see. Error value, same logic as I have explained on the analog channels. So it will be the value to be displayed and record if there is an error on the communication, okay? And decimal places. Well, how do you now set the configuration, uh, the, the, the configuration about reading? Well, there is a reading interval, so you, select the reading interval, the attempts. So how many times I wanna try to communicate before I detect it failed. Maximum response time that I want to wait and time between comments. These generally should follow some rules on Modbus protocol. Uh, it, comes, um, it comes probably by default with those configurations. You can change it accordingly, okay? Any questions? Keep sending. That's uh, uh, that's that for remote channels, and then uh, we have the virtual channels. As I have said before, uh, virtual channels are the ones that we use to do calculations. Okay, we we need those to calculate some parameters. So here, I have brought that example um, that I said about post counting. Okay, so. Um, if I'm if I connected a, a flow meter to the to to the field logger's digital input that is generating post, pulses, okay, and I read in the manual that um, this flow meter reads six uh, for every liter of water, it's six thousand pulses. So it's six thousand pulses per liter of water. For example, in this example I brought here, I actually looked at a manual here to do this. So what should I do? I'll give you some examples. So first of all, I need to count the number of pulses. So I have enabled my digital input, right? Now what I do is I'll select the operator. It's a drop-down list. There's several types of operators. 
and on our manual, there's the description for each of those operations and what they do, okay? So you select the operators as counter, so count. It will be counting each and every post the digital input receives. Then next step here, posts per liter, I define a constant. So you go to the operator constant and you define a number and that's it. So I used a constant at 6,000. Why 6,000? Because I want to do a division. I want to divide my, the poses I'm counting by the standard of the flow meter, which is 6,000 poses per liter. Then I can find out what is the volume. So next step is I take this count, this counter, and I divide by the by the pulses per liter constant and what i have is the volume in liters okay so i have counted 12000 pulses now i divide it by 6000 what do i have 2 liters and so on okay i can also um, find out what my flow is how do i do that well i have to do a variation what does the variation do? So I'll go here, select the operator variation, okay? And I calculate the variation on volume. This is basically a, a derivative calculation. So what it does is it takes, when you select variation, there's a time configuration. So I have selected, for example, um, 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, I will calculate my variation so I can find out my flow in liters per minute. Do you follow that? So I'm, 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 I'm calculating variation every, uh, every 60 seconds. So what does this do? Um, I have at second number zero, I have three liters of water. And in, in second number 60, after a minute, I have now five liters. What variation does is it takes the five liters less uh, or minus three, and it finds out that I have increased two liters in the last minute. So my flow at that minute is two liters per minute. This is all possible on the field logger. Besides this, which is one example here, that I wanted to go through here with you, these possibilities of simple operations, such as a, a subtraction. For example, I take temperature at point one minus temperature at point two, and I have a differential temperature. That could be differential uh, relative humidity and so on, okay? Hope you, you get that. Uh, Questions, keep sending them through. Uh, I'll go through them in the end or some of them that I can answer now, I'll do it too. Okay, uh, 128 equations can be done. And also an, uh, another thing is, for example, those in intermediate variables that you don't actually want to see or record, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't need to be recorded. They won't use your memory space, okay? Um, all right, alarms, so business rules as well. So what does these do? This is what will generate the notifications that we have spoken about before when looking at, uh, when looking at the, 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 the organization and the data flow organization. So for example, one example here is I want to alarm, I want to turn on a relay when temperature is above 35 degrees. Of course, this example here is on uh, degrees Celsius, okay? But again, the, 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 um, the unit is configurable, okay? So one example would be turning on and off relays, all right? Uh, another example would be sending emails. So I want to send an email to this gentleman every time my total, whatever this channel is, is greater than 103. I want to send an email to them. This could be one, this could be a list of emails, okay? Or I want to um, reset or preset uh, an accumulation. So 
in the example before where we were seeing uh, counting uh, logic for flow meter, remember that we are counting to infinity. We are always counting. At some point, we need to reset that counter by some logic. That could be when uh, it reaches a certain limit or that could be when I press a button or that could be time-based, okay? Uh, so those are all possibilities to use uh, alarms. Alarms can also start and stop logging, okay? And command all the eight digital outputs that we have um, spoken about before, okay? Okay, uh, I see there is a question here. This is interesting. Um, and I want to look at this question before we move. Okay. Um, what are, uh, I'll, I'll repeat the questions. The, the, the question is a good question. Uh, what are the limitations of using the field logger as a flow rate totalizer in the scenario involving a flow meter with a proportional 4 to 20 milliamps output and not pulse? Okay, uh, I understand there is an integrator function in the virtual maths channel. What are the practical limits? Okay, um, right, uh, I mean, accumulation function. Um, well, it's completely feasible if you, besides having a, um, a, a pulse input, you have a 4 to 20 milliamps uh, input on the field logger, okay? Um, both, uh, when you have a four to 20 milliamps input, that means you already have flow data. So you're reading flow actually. So what you wanna do in order to, um, in order to find out about the volume and totalize it, is you want to, um, you want to accumulate or you want to integrate that value, okay? Uh, by that, what happens is you have a limit of 32-bit, uh, okay? It's a register, a 32-bit register where you're doing the accumulation, okay? That is the, the limit. Uh, of course, at some point, you got to, um, you got to reset that, that, that counter, okay? Uh, before you, um, you go through that 32-bit limit, okay? I hope this answers the question. If uh, if not, please send it again uh, or let me know what is not clear. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at data logging now. Um, this is the last uh, the last point to be configured on the field logger when you're going through the um, the configuration software. Okay. Um, well, you can, as I said before, use it as only monitoring system. So you would disable logins, but you can also configure if enabled, uh, you can configure different start and stop modes. Okay. You can start now, you can start in, in a defined time, date and time or by an alarm or your SCADA system will send a command to the field logger every time you want to start. Okay. Um, why is that for? Well, why buy an alarm or why buy a Modbus common? There are several cases where you just want to actually log data when you are at a critical point of your process. So I just want to start uh, logging because I, uh, 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 when my pressure reaches 10 bar. Why? Well, because my, my process is totally under control if below 10 bar. After 10 bar, things get critical and I want to uh, keep monitoring in order to, if an accident happens, I will be able to see what happened, for example, okay? On the stop mode, there is a very important point here is you have two types of stop logging. One is full memory, not only two, you have four actually, but two most important ones. One is when memory is full. So both cases, if you're using internal uh, memory, uh, in that case, uh, when you reach 512,000 logs, you will stop logging. 
field logger stops. Okay. The other is uh, never stop. So that is a uh, wraparound mode. So when you reach the end of the memory, field logger starts overwriting the older data. Okay. Oh, sorry. You hear an airplane crossing here. Um, you can also choose it to stop logging in a defined date and time. Uh, so you really want to log it just at night. So uh, I will start it now. Or I want to stop at eight in the morning. That's it. It's just a simple test, a single one. I don't want it to be a continuous monitoring solution, for example. Or you want to stop by an alarm. Those are all possibilities. Here is what I said about the, 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 um, the channel selection. So in that case, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm accounting um, pulls or, 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 or totalizing something. But what I actually want to measure is just the total volume. I don't want to spend memory in some other thing. So I just select the channels that I really want to measure. Limit is 100 channels to be logged, OK? So at each data stamp, so time stamp, so uh, 10 o'clock, 10 30, uh, 11, so on, I'll have, uh, um, I'll have um, one point of each of those channels. Okay. Uh, here you choose the logging memory. So you either use internal flash or the SD card. So either internal memory or the SD card. I saw there was someone who asked, um, what is the limit for, um, for the SD card? The limit is 16 gigabytes, okay? Uh, trust me, it's quite a lot of data. Um, it's nearly impossible to run out of, of data with a 16 gig um, SD card, okay? And login interval is also conf uh, configurable, so as we, have discussed before, login interval could be set differently from read interval. So I'm reading every second, but I'm only uh, logging every 60 seconds. So every minute, for example, okay. Download uh, management. So here is how we, uh, after reading, after everything is configured, I want to read a, a, a batch of data. Well, you can download and view data in a table format, in a chart format, XLS, PDF, doc. It can come in different formats for specific softwares and novel softwares, specifically SuperView, Field Chart. It can generate reports, and these reports will also have some special uh, measurements that are not uh, included on the configuration before, such as MKT, average, maximum, minimum. So this is just to help you um, analyzing data afterwards. MKT, for those who are not uh, familiar with this, is very useful for pharmaceutical companies. Um, it will allow you to find out if uh, temperature was out of the limit for a long period or at an extreme different temperature out of the range. So for different types of measurements, it's it means mean magnetic temperature. Here you can see an example of uh, audit reports. Uh, very important here to mention that everything, all data that comes from the field logger will not be edited. So you, you, can, you, can, you can change data whatever you want, uh, whenever you want, but inside of the field logger's memory, there's not a way to change data. Data comes in encrypted format. You can generate those sorts of reports that you're seeing here. Uh, the reports come with uh, some basic but important points. Uh, here, for example, date and time of collection, company name, uh, 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 header or name, your company logo, and then some description of what tests you did or what process that is. Um, 
it's very nice to see those graphics because it leads you to understand. It takes you for a, a different perspective of your process. You can see it easily if the temperature was uh, gone um, out of the range or pressure. Seeing it graphically, seeing it visually it is easier generally. Here you can see minimum. Uh, I'm, I'm just translating to you online here. It said minimum, maximum value, and mean. Uh, or average okay uh, here is where you put the description which will appear here the graphic you will see beforehand you can set the limits on y-axis um, and here is the export um, tool which you will add your logo for example Okay, so uh, on that on that point of data security and integrity on on uh, the food logger, you can't change data on that. So, do you mention that to your customers when you're offering the food logger? Do you mention data safety and integrity? Do you mention that this is a, a, an important point? Please. Help us with uh, your answers if you can. Hope you're seeing this polling now. Thanks, answers coming through. Thanks very much. I'll give you some more seconds. Drink some water meanwhile. Okay, thank you. Ending the polling. Uh, here, share the results. Um, you will see um, here, most of you mentioned that, uh, of course. So that is uh, nice to know. Um, good that most of you are willing to try it next time and some not always mention. I, I would like to reinforce that this is an important point. And... Um, Again, it's, it's important also for those who follow CFR regulations, uh, FDA regulations, and for those who are interested in going that way um, to have systems like this, okay? Thanks for your answers again. Let's go now and see some, um, some examples of application, okay? Uh, here in this slide, you will see it's a mix of lots of different things. It's all together. So everything the field logger can do uh, in one, you have Modbus devices connected to it. You have um, uh, a flow meter connected to its digital input. You have alarms. Everything is possible is here. So it's difficult to get you to understand all those points together. So we got some of the inquiries we have received from our customers uh, isolated. So that's what you will see in this example here. For example, uh, we have, uh, then we can break different applications and show you how it is. So for example, here on the standalone application for local IOs. So in, in that case, for example, you might have a customer who have some flow meters uh, and then some alarms happening, some uh, maybe a lamp or sound that is coming when you, uh, you reach a certain limit. You, have, you could have temperature sensors connected straight to the field logger and some uh, head mount transmitters or DIN rail transmitters. Uh, important that loop power transmitters can be powered by the field logger through its auxiliary 24 volts output. And all the configuration and data download could be do, uh, done locally through USB. So imagine a place where there's no internet connectivity. Uh, the user doesn't want to use a 4G um, um, remote solution 
for example, or doesn't want to connect the field logger to a 4G uh, router, and they have somebody that comes around and stick a USB sticker in there and read data afterwards. So that would be a possibility. Um, also, one possibility would be connecting to Modbus devices. So I have received several cases where um, I have a field logger, okay? And uh, my customers want to read uh, temperature and humidity, for example. And they will wire four to 20 milliamps input transmitters to its um, analog inputs. But in other cases, why don't you go for uh, Modbus RAT transmitters directly? That comes with the flow meter as well. We know the field logger has all functionalities or all features that will allow you to read a pulse input. But in some cases, it's just easier to connect a RS-45 flow meter to it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Every time the field logger can be a Modbus RTU master, that might save a lot of your time because it's easy and there's less wires, it's more reliable sometimes. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, also, this is a very common case uh, that I'm sharing with you. Besides being a Modbus RTU master, the field logger can also be an interface between what you have on the higher level on the ethernet network and what you have on the, on the floor, on the factory floor. So uh, in this case, I have a SCADA system, okay, that is running, uh, is, is inquiring from, directly from those devices. So for example, DigiRay or RIT Climate through the field logger. The field logger at the same time it is a Modbus RTU master, it could be as well a uh, Modbus gateway, Modbus TCP to Modbus RTU. So the SCADA sends the command, the field logger translates it into RTU, sends to the device, the device answers, the field logger retranslates it and sends to the SCADA system. So that will work. Also, if you want that floor data to be sent to the cloud, this is also a possibility, okay? Remember, our field logger has direct access to our Novus platform, Novus platform, uh, Novus cloud platform, okay? And that is free of charge at this moment. So uh, have a look at that option as well. Um, expanding IOs, this is that possibility I mentioned before. Is, you, you will reach out to us and say, oh, Bruno, I want, um, I want a Modbus, um, I, want a mod, I want 12 channels or 15 channels or something like that, but the food logger only has eight. Well, why not expanding it? Use the Modbus RTU network to expand its possibilities. Uh, also a very important detail here is the field logger has a economic version, okay? Which is a unit that doesn't come with an ethernet. It doesn't come with uh, memory expansion and doesn't come with um, a HMI connection. So I, it's, it's, it's a short version of the field logger, but it works very well as a, an IO module. So if you're thinking of expanding your uh, actual field logger possibilities or, or channels, you connect it to a Modbus, to, sorry, to a, a, a low cost field logger version, okay? If you only use, want to use it as a standalone logger, not connected to anything, well, the low cost uh, version can also work for you as a data logger, okay? Also important one here, DigiRail Connect is your latest release on IO, uh, IO modules, Modbus IO modules. Have a look at that as well, okay? Um, remote connection. So lots of you ask me also about, uh, well, I have a, 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 an application where the field logger doesn't have access to internet through a ethernet cable. 
how can we solve that? Well, we can connect it to a gateway, a 4G gateway, okay? We have one available. There's plenty of uh, gateways available. As long as it can provide internet access to the field logger through ethernet, that is valid, okay? The field logger will still be able to send data to the cloud or a uh, SCADA system will be able to interface, to be interfaced through a VPN router, VPN tunnel or so on. All these functionalities on the, on the air gate will be accessible, will be reachable through a router, okay? Here, the last example, I think, uh, on wireless. I think most of you uh, or some of you have watched a uh, webinar last week about the, or wireless, um, or wireless devices. If you haven't, um, one of my colleagues can send the link now for the recording on, on the chat. Um, so you can get to see it and understand how it works, okay, later on. If you're using a field logger, you can also go wireless. You can connect it to our wireless gateways and reach all the expansion channels, all the remote devices on Modbus. You can reach them by uh, or via our gateway in a wireless way, okay? So also consider that when you're going wireless, you need a data concentrator. You need one device that will get all the data and store it or make it accessible to other devices. So keep in mind the field logger. I want to inquire from you now before we get to the questions um, about, um, about the most wanted features. So what do you think from everything we have discussed now and all the application options we have seen uh, what are the most wanted features? What do you think have more value to your customers? Please answer that to us. That will help us a lot. Thanks, answers coming through. Thank you very much. Um, we have probably 50% of you have answered. Um, if the others can also have a look. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some more time. Oh, Marco, uh, have sent the link to the, um, through the chat. If you're interested to see the Airgate Modbus um, presentation, there's a presentation, okay, it's on Google Drive. And there's also the recording with, of course, the video, which you can access. Uh, we are also saying these to be uploaded on YouTube, so you can easily access it at any time. Uh, I'm ending the polling here. Thanks for the results, for, for, the, for the answers. I'll share the results with you. Um, most of you think that the most important functionality or feature is uh, encrypted and safe data. Then we have second place. Uh, we have here uh, three others with 46%. Interface with other devices, the comms. I must agree with you. I think this is one of the most relevant features. Alarm on email and the digital I.O. Okay, thanks very much for your answers. Um, let uh, me see here. This is just one last example on an application that is very, very common for us here. Uh, it, it is related to warehouse monitoring. So 
you could get here, uh, for example, remote notification via SMS using uh, a, a 4G router, okay, Airgate 4G. You uh, have local notification with the, with the SuperView, which is a SCADA system. You have nearly 100% wireless network using uh, RAT Airs plus the Airgate, okay? And all data being securely and safely stored within the field logger, okay? And all the reports are available on the field logger and on the SuperView, oh, sorry. Um, just I'll bother with you with one last question before I get, and then we'll get to the questions. So if you please can send your questions uh, through the webinar for those who uh, know about, um, or, or, or few, oh, it's, there's something wrong here, it's Novus Controllers, it's Novus Field Logger, competing price and features in your market. For those who know the answer, uh, if you can help us with the answers, please, um, that will I'll appreciate. And I'm already, start uh, have started reading the answers here to uh, the, the the questions here that you sent throughout the webinar to um, answer them live okay so we have about 15 minutes to half past five in brazil where i'm speaking to you from now uh okay so thanks very much for answers i'll share the results uh, Seventy-five percent think that Novus is competitive, offers the right selection of features at a reasonable price, and one thinks that Nov uh, Field Logger is cheaper and better than the competition. So, appreciate your answers. That's very good to know. I we really want to see that that in action. We really want to see that uh, in the market. So, thanks for your help. Thanks for your uh, your uh, answers. All right. Uh, let's get to the questions here. Let's get to the questions. I have, if you have questions, please send them now. That's our opportunity to discuss about them. Um, again, uh, I'll read again that one. What's the maximum size of SD card? Uh, it's 16 gigabytes. As I said before, it's uh, unlikely that more than 16 gigabyte of data is needed. Uh, remember, the field logger has internally 512,000 logs. Okay, so internally, without need of SD card, 512,000 logs. Okay, um, I have another detail here. Um, uh, remember, we had that question on what are the limitations when we need to totalize uh, flow, uh, uh, volume when a flow meter um, is connected via a 4 to 20 milliamps. So it's not pulse, it's 4 to 20 milliamps. We, um, this is giving you already uh, data uh, uh, in flow. So it's flow input. So what we need to do is we need to integrate that flow for it to become volume, all right? Um, and then I said, there's no problem on that. And I said, it's a 32-bit register. Yes, it is a 32-bit unsigned integer, okay? It's an integer with no sign, 32-bit. This is the limit, okay? Before you reach that limit, when you reach that limit, what will happen is it will reset automatically to zero. But as you don't want that to happen, what you do is you will uh, find a way to reset that volume before, okay? Um, and the question is, uh, are you able to specify the period or time base at which it samples the flow rate and integrates? Yes. It is possible to do that. The field logger has all the configurations you need in order to take a 4 to 20 milliamps input and make it become volume, okay? All the configurations needed. What I would suggest, suggest is uh, if you have a, 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 an application example, something that you want to read 
right now you you can get to us with the details for example your flow meter details and we'll be more than happy to uh actually do it for you show you how it works okay uh that is not a problem that is not a problem let me see another question and and uh, yes if, if it's not clear so when you select accumulation uh there's a there's a there's both accumulation variation all these are possible there um there is an interval configuration so you can select that interval and that will help you to find out the volume or integrate it in the best way. Hope this answers the question. Um, another question here is, I would like to see an example of taking an analog 4 to 20 milliamps input for flow from a flow meter, integrating it, totalizing and getting a 24 hour total for a monthly report. This is our biggest need. Great, it's possible, okay? Uh, there is one point here that must be uh, kept in mind, okay? The field logger doesn't have a, um, a proper re uh, monthly or weekly reset configuration. So what we do generally, we, we take two different approaches. By using the virtual channels, we can create a time base, okay? Uh, again, we would be more than happy to show you how to do that, okay? It's just because it's not enough time for us to actually go through all the specific details of each application here that I won't do it now. But if you send, for example, your flow meter configuration and how you want it to be done, we'll do it for you through the technical support with no problem, okay? Um, and actually help you to understand how it's done and then on the next opportunities, you can do it by yourself. So uh, yes, it is possible to do what you mentioned, get a 24 hour total, uh, total for a monthly report, but keep in mind for the monthly uh, uh, reset, for example, we, we can take two approaches. One is, we will create a time, a, a time base through the virtual channels. And that time base is not totally accurate. In, in a month's time, you might have a couple of minutes or maybe 10 minutes of inaccuracy in time, okay? Um, the other approach we can take is using an external timer. The external timer will send a post to the field logger every time you want to you want it to reset. So th that external timer is more accurate as a timer and will let the field logger know, look, you must reset now your timer, okay? But at the same time, we are discussing internally in order to integrate those functionalities into the field logger. So we wish to have a uh, full um, monthly and weekly um, resets integrated to the field logger. If you look at our new generation of loggers as well, uh, log boxes and so on, you see that these functions come already uh, on that. If you don't know about the Logbox Connect family, you gotta check them out as well, okay? Um, any other questions, please keep sending them if you have any. Um, I think most questions were related to really the, that function on, on, on accumulation. I think that, that gives us quite a lot of uh, doubts. Um, okay, if we don't have any more questions, I'll appreciate if you can uh, kindly let me know what you think about this webinar before we finish it. Uh, once again, really appreciate your uh, your patience and your presence today here. Um, if you can let me know what you think, if we have anything to improve, um, we will do it, gladly we will improve it um, and make it accordingly with your need. Uh, answers coming. Give you some more seconds. 
your feedback is very important. All right. Thanks again. Thanks very much. Uh, appreciate your time. Hope we can do more sessions like these and learn together. Um, if you have any questions, you know how to reach us. Uh, you can reach us through uh, our email address is over here, or you can um, reply to the email. You can, you will receive uh, this recording and you will receive um, this presentation as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, Be safe. Keep well.